To begin the ceremony, we're pleased to have one of our very own faculty for our commencement speaker, Professor Jay Balaga. Professor Balaga is an internationally recognized expert on power semiconductor devices. He's a member of the National Academy of Engineering and a fellow of the IEEE. He spent 15 years at the General Electric Research and Development Center, Schenectady, New York, leading their power device effort and was bestowed the highest scientific rank of Coolidge Fellow. He joined NC State in 1988 as a full professor and was promoted to the rank of Distinguished University Professor in 1997. Among his many NC State honors, he was the recipient of the 1998 Omax Gardner Award given by the North Carolina University Board of Governors to the one person within the 16 constituent universities who has made the greatest contribution to the welfare of the human race. Professor Balaga has authored 12 books and over 500 scientific articles. He has been granted more than 100 U.S. patents. The Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers has recognized him numerous times, most recently with the Lame Medal at Whitehall Palace in London. Scientific American Magazine included him among the eight heroes of the semiconductor revolution when commemorating the 50th anniversary of the invention of the transistor. A type of power transistor that he invented has improved the efficiency of a wide variety of electrical devices from motor controllers to compact fluorescent bulbs. This increase in efficiency has resulted in a reduction in the number of cold fire coal-fired power plants that have been necessary, leading to a reduction in CO2 emissions estimated to exceed one, exceed one trillion pounds per year. Because of this, it is likely that he has the smallest carbon footprint of anyone in the world. It's my pleasure to introduce to you Professor Jay Balaga. Good morning, graduates. Thank you. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Stansel for that fine introduction, which I prepared for him. <laughs> so. Well, what I want to do this morning is to speak to you about two things. Firstly, about setting goals, and the second, about professional integrity. During my entire career in the industry that you heard about and academia, I have found it indispensable to set aggressive goals and then try to make them a reality. By getting to where you are today, you are obviously also good at setting goals and achieving them. A few years ago, and perhaps it feels like many years ago, each of you set the goal of getting a degree in electrical engineering. Today we are gathered here to celebrate that achievement of your goal. So let us begin by asking all the family members and friends assembled here, as well as the faculty of the EC department in giving the graduates a great hand of applause. Now I'd like to do something radical. I'm going to ask the graduates to give themselves a big hand of applause. I hope that felt good. Well, one of the great things about setting goals is the joy and satisfaction of, that you derive when you accomplish these goals. The degree you're receiving today is an obvious example of such a goal. However, unless you belong, to a rare and what I would call pesky a breed of professional graduate students, achieving a degree is not considered to be a lifetime achievement goal. Your degree is actually a foundation to allow you to do greater things. So my message to you this morning is to go ahead and celebrate your achievement today, but it is already time to set new goals. This may initially be a short-term goal, such as finding a job or perhaps working towards a higher degree. But my advice to you is to make sure you set some longer-term goals. Now, in my own case, after obtaining my bachelor's degree in electrical engineering in India, I set the goal of coming to the United States to perform research 
that would have a positive impact on society. Today you use my inventions every time you drive your car, enjoy the comforts of air conditioning in your home or office, or turn on a compact fluorescent lamp. As you heard from Dan, the cumulative impact of my work over the last 20 years has been a reduction in carbon emissions by actually over two trillion pounds, which is equivalent to the total emission of the world in two years. At the same time, my inventions have saved you, the consumers, approximately three trillion dollars in terms of gasoline and electricity savings. So I feel comfortable in stating that I have accomplished the goal I set for myself 40 years ago. Now perhaps your goals may be different. For instance, you could set the goal of becoming filthy rich, like Bill Gates, who created a technology that everybody wants. Perhaps your goal could be to obtain a lot of power by becoming the head of one of the largest corporations in America. An example would be Jack Welch, who was a chemical engineer and became the CEO of General Electric Company. However, let me warn you that it will not be easy to get into that job market because it has been cornered by the business school graduates. Now, perhaps your goal should be to do research and win a Nobel Prize. A good example would be Jack Kilby, who received the Nobel Prize in 2000 for invention of the integrated circuit. Or perhaps you can set an even loftier goal, such as joining the faculty of the ECE department. <laughs> well, I think I've made my point about the importance of setting long-term goals. So let me move on to the second topic of professional integrity. Now I want to remind you that you have now earned the right to be called engineers. Now engineers are not like lawyers who upon graduation from law school begin to practice the legal profession. Engineers are not like physicians who set up a medical practice upon graduation from medical school. Your Graduation with an electrical degree says that your days of practicing are over. <laughs> Society and the EC department now expect you to get it right the very first time. <laughs> now this is not a new concept that I'm proposing. It dates back through the centuries. Even the code of Hammurabi, written in 300 BC states, if an engineer builds a house and the house collapses and causes the death of the owner, that engineer shall be put to death. Now that's a heck of a serious enforcement of professional integrity. <laughs> now let me give you an example of most recent times. There's the story of the engineer and architect, Sir Joseph Paxton, who designed and built the Crystal Palace in London in, in 1851 for a World's Fair exhibition. The newspapers at that time reported, and I quote, when questioned about its structural integrity, Sir Paxton got on top of the Crystal Palace with 42,000 pounds of dead weight, which according to the newspaper consisted of 300 of his construction workers. They then proceeded to jump up and down on the structure in unison to prove its stability. Now that's, that you will agree with me is a fine example of commitment to professional integrity. Now fortunately for Sir Paxton, the term dead weight did not apply in this case. And the Crystal Palace survived for many years until 1936. It would still be standing today if it had not been destroyed by a fire set by an arsonist who was probably a jealous graduate of the physics department. <laughs> so in closing, I would like to leave you with the following advice. If you set ambitious goals and then pursue them with professional integrity, you can continue to look forward to having a very rewarding engineering career. So my best wishes go out to each of you in your new endeavors. Thank you.